All right, so this time we're making a run for a Sabre. As most of you know, Sabres are sold as a John Deere product, but they're really not actually a John Deere. Most of them are usually rebranded MTDs or some other style and brand. Uh, not really expecting this one to end up being much. I'm expecting it to be a parts machine, but you never know. The guy said come grab it and that he'd haul it out of the woods with his ATV, so we'll see what kind of condition it's in. So for $50, I'm not quite sure I got the better part of this deal. And I'll show you guys why in just a little bit. But as it sits right now, flat, 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 uber utter flat. But we'll see what we can do to get them powered up. All right, so as you can see, obviously, we took the hood off. If you've ever tried to take the hood off one of these John Deere's, it's not like a Craftsman. What you have to do is you have to lift the hood, and then at just the right angle, you got to move the hood sideways and then pull out. But what you also got to do is down in here, there's going to be two or three zip ties, one in the hood and one on the plate that goes right here. I've taken all of this off because I want full access to this motor. And the reason I want full access is I want to be able to actually have this out and put a long handled screwdriver in it if I do manage to get this moving. And the reason I word it that way is because this is utterly, without a doubt, not moving. Now the other thing to note right now is that if you pull this out, and we set it down here. You'll notice there's a bit of a shine on it. Well, if you had smell-o-vision right now, you would be smelling pure gasoline. So, judging from the tank being thoroughly empty, and that smelling like pure gasoline, I'm going to bet somebody tried to start this with brand new gas in it, and it totally seized and locked it, and the whole case is probably filled with gas. But the first thing we're going to double check right now is pulling that spark plug out and see if anything ends up coming out of it for gas. So we've got our 5.8 socket on the extension here. The other thing to note is that spark plug looks relatively new. So let's see if we can get this champion plug out of here. Whoop, there we go. Yep, that popped free, nice and easy. Yeah, I can definitely smell gas at this point. Let's see whether the cylinder's got any in it. Oh, we got something coming out of there. Yeah, you can see right here, come around that entire spark plug is damp now what's interesting about this being damp is that the owner of this told me supposedly it had sat for two years untouched i'm gonna go with the idea that that wasn't true so at this point we've got that out We'll try and hand turn this a bit. Nope, no go. So that's the reason why this chain is here. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to lift it up. We're going to pop off the deck and the dry belt if we can, or at least pop off the deck and then see if it'll turn from there. And the reason being is because oftentimes I find with the MTD style belts um, setups for the decks, that they will end up rusting directly shut. The uh, belt itself will actually rust around the engine pulley or the deck will rust itself solid because of the cheap upper pulleys and it'll stop the engine from turning. That's what we're gonna do next. Is check Hi, so I had to go make supper for my family and I managed to finally make it through supper and I had my dessert here but while I was making supper and feeding everybody, I also decided to feed this. 
So obviously it's got no oil in it whatsoever. So I found some used motor oil from an oil change on my wife's truck. I poured in about a quarter or so in order to be able to just have something in it. Um, the oil I actually put through a coffee filter in order to make sure there weren't any particles or anything in it. So we're not just injecting bad stuff back into a already messed up motor. Now the other thing I did was while I had it up like this, I took the time to pull the spark plug out and fill the cylinder with PB Blaster and let it soak. So what we're going to do at this point is I've now pulled the engine pulley totally off so that we know that there's nothing down below in order to cause any issues. I've also taken the time to pull off the starter cover on this side and what I've concluded is I'm going to end up having to take this entire top plate off and get the mouse nest that I'm going to bet is inside of here out. And that way I can get to the engine um, flywheel nut and I can be able to go back and forth with a pry bar and see if we can get this to come loose. At this point, it's up to luck. Here we go. All right, so let's take a sec in order to go back to the picture of where it was. And we're back. Now, how much you want to bet that there is a mouse in there? Or at least the nest. One, two, three, poof. Holy cow. There's no nest. Wow, I was fully expecting one. All right, so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna put it down on the ground. We're gonna grab a bar, get to the flywheel nut, see if we can make it move. All right, well, here goes nothing. Well, rather, here goes $50 if it doesn't break loose. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, so at this point, we're gonna get out our trusted Audu. Now, I really love this thing, and you should check it out in the link that's gonna be in the description. As you can see, it's been well used, but it has a manual kickover button on it. So I can hook it up, no sparks, no nothing. Right now, I'll hook it right up directly to the starter, and I'll hook the other side right directly up to the inside edge of the starter, and nothing's going to happen. But if I hold down this little red button here, we're gonna see if we can get some spark out of it. That's not good. That starter is not moving and making really bad noises. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna rip a starter apart next. All right, we're gonna try to rebuild this. I'm not gonna bother filming it because it's probably a lost cause. So that's the bottom plate. That's the chunks of magnet. There's where your electrical connects. And here's the inside where you can see the chunks of magnet missing from that edge. This is really common, unfortunately, for these brig starters if they've been left out. There's something about the design of the way that they are that the water comes down inside, it expands, it shatters the magnet, and you end up with magical white smoke the next time you go to use it. We're going to throw this back together once we clean it up a little bit on the belt sander, and we'll see what we can do. Hi, right, so... On our Audu jumper, jumper. Hi. Right. So on our Audu jumper start of awesomeness feature, let's try again. So we just got done rebuilding this, got all the rust cleaned out of it, all the fragments. We're gonna put our positive down here. We're gonna put our ground up here. We're gonna hold down this nice, cute little hidden button here. Hey, 
And no white smoke. Off to the races. There we go. So we got spark. Let's see if we can get some fire. All right, so we got some starter fluid. Uh, put a gob in there. I'm gonna set it to run, full choke. Let's see what happens. so let's talk about this little saber here so originally we bought it for fifty dollars i ended up having to swap the front tires um these tires are actually off of the murray that i built a gas powered power wheel build out of you can take a look at that later on the channel if you'd like so we ended up pulling the original blades and sharpening them up because they're actually in really good condition the motor is doing okay it needs to have the lower main seal done on the shaft. We're gonna end up having to go and do that later. I'm not gonna bother doing that. It's like a five, $10 part, no big deal. The rear tires are pretty weather cracked. This one here seems to have come back to life after we put some automatic transmission fluid in it. It's an old timer trick in order to bring weather crack back. This one here obviously is just playing a lost cause. I literally, pump that up in order to come shoot this piece of video so this one's a lost cause we're gonna end up putting a tube in that one later no big deal so we got a 20 dollar tube we got a 10 dollar gasket part the valve head train and everything needed to be gone over so i pulled the head off i put everything back together so there's $20 worth of gaskets there. So we got 60 bucks. We got a $50 machine, a little bit of spit shine and polish. And she should retail around here, probably somewhere in the $300 range. The real reality is it's only a 38 inch deck and those just don't sell very well. For some reason, people want the larger 42s. So I'll probably end up selling it in the 350 and take the first person with 300 bucks that shows up. So there we go. Thank you for supporting the tractor hunting and all the other videos that we do here on the channel. Enjoy your hunts, share them up on Facebook and let's see what everybody's got. Have a good day.